The evidence around green space is, is really quite strong. So this has really impacted the local community. They didn't really have a place to come outside and play before that felt safe and accessible. The beauty of this particular project is looking at how successful these nature-based solutions have been in responding to climate change. You don't realise what a big impact it will make. You, you, you sit and you think, oh no, a park, this will happen, that will happen, and nobody's going to use it. But is it they do. What we want to do in this project is provide some robust evidence to show the actual impact that green spaces have. So it's a really important project for Manchester and it's really exciting. And I was involved in the design of West Gorton Community Park. West Gorton Community Park. Today we're here at West Gorton Community Park. And we're at West Gorton uh, Community Park this morning. So this park is uh, what we call a demonstration project. Grow Green is um, a European Horizon 2020 funded project um, which aims to demonstrate the impact that nature-based solutions can have on climate change. So I'm here today in West Gorton, which is a newly constructed park that we've built as part of the project. The recent um, COVID pandemic has shown that green spaces are really, really important in communities. But what we want to do in this project is provide some robust evidence to show the actual impact that green spaces have on climate change, things like flooding and heat stress, but also um, biodiversity, health and well-being, and just generally the like cohesion within a community. So we're really looking forward to getting the results back from this project uh, to demonstrate that you know green spaces in communities like this are just essential. They're not a nice to have. Investment in green space is just critical. But I think what we've really seen with COVID is um, We've seen a massive rise in use of green space as people have been spending more time at home. So I think one of the statistics I've seen is that it's been an increase of 25% in use of green space. Um, but what we've also seen is a really stark difference between more deprived communities and more affluent, often predominantly white communities. People and place is absolutely at the heart of what we do and this is what this project is about. And when we talk about resilience, we're talking about resilience in all senses. So yeah, the climate change um, aspects of this project are phenomenal and the nature aspects, but also about how green spaces are really important in creating connectedness within communities. We can build, bring communities together in our green spaces, help them build capacity to support their own community, get young people involved, just in all senses, it is just so important. It's very much at the heart of everything that we're about. I think the children at first thought it was going to be an epic playground and it is that, but also they gained a keen understanding of the ecological benefits of having something like this on their doorstep in the community. We're a bit blown away by the extent of what is here. Certainly there's a lot to be learned about planting, there's a lot to be learned about the different materials, the different structures in the park and we're very, very keen to work alongside Manchester University in the coming months and years in ensuring that the children know exactly what it is that they've got on their doorstep and how to use it and appreciate it. Groundwork got involved in this project in 2018 when we were subcontracted by one of the lead partners of Grow Green, um, Guinness Partnership, to help with community engagement and provide community expertise in the area. So we've been involving the community from the outset. Um, so, firstly, we um, conducted a baseline um, consultation with the community to find out what the current issues are in the area, how their current park was being used, if at all, um, and this highlighted a few different problems and that the fact that um, this place is just crying out for somewhere for the community to meet. 
brilliant. That was my first thought, it was brilliant. I didn't realise how big it would be. I just thought that it would be the size as, as it was before, but there wasn't a lot on it before and there was a lot of um, uh, vandalism and things and it was, and, and people were complaining that they couldn't see the kids because of the hill. Come down, bring your kids and come down the hill. And they had a say um, throughout the design process, so we um, conducted some more consultations around the different sketch designs and the concept designs, um, so they really were able to feedback every step of the way on how the park would look. But the park at the other that goes like the Clue Street Park, that's where a lot of people sit and um, I've seen people in there having a lunch, I've seen people in there sat reading a book and there's a couple in there now just sort of like pointing things out. It's, it is getting well used, it is brilliant. Why is it important to involve communities in projects such as these and the whole design process? I think it really helps create that sense of ownership. They are like the local people to this area, they're the local experts and they're really the ones that know how to solve their own problems and um, it's really important to involve them from the start so they're in, invested in this area and they'll be the ones that are taking care of it long term and helping it be more sustainable. Because I was on the, 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 the group that sort of like when it started to come up and you start designing it, you feel like it belongs to you. So when, like with, with like litter and stuff like that, it's, it's really, really annoying. We're engaging every part of this community, so there's lots of diverse groups coming along engaging with it from families, young people, school groups will be coming here to learn more about the site, um, older people coming and using the site, it's really a park for everybody. So we were commissioned on this project by Manchester City Council to work with them in partnership with a number of key stakeholders and the initiative was part of the Horizon 2020 project to see how we can come up with some innovative design solutions um, which use nature-based design features rather than heavy engineering features to help combat climate change. And one of the key principles for us was to see how we could reduce stormwater runoff and reduce flooding by introducing a system that is connected um, using infiltration, attenuation um, and slowing the flow of water down. The centre of the park, which we call the meadow, is full of wildflowers as you can see here and we've got trim trails and play with topography to try and capture some of the rainwater runoff and direct it into a series of swales and rain gardens. So the particular innovation for this area of the park is that um, ordinarily if, a, if it rains the swale can take water from surrounding soft landscape and sometimes from a hard landscape but in this particular instance we also wanted to capture rainwater from the road network which is not often done in this country but we feel there's a real opportunity there. Um, in, a, in a storm situation very often road gullies can block up with leaf litter or debris and um, silt so to actually block up purposely the gullies in the roads and use a dish channel instead to take the rainwater from the road underneath the pavement and directly into one of these swale features is managing it at source. Um, we've used a series of head walls around the water inlet and outlet positions which have got stone around and that, that risk, um, minimises risk of erosion to the soil. And through the centre of each of the swales we've got this series of check dams where the water is physically slowed down so the flow rate is reduced and that means that the park and the swales can act more like a sponge and soak up that water and it then feeds the plants. So by the time it gets down to the end of this particular park area into a big uh, rain garden with a pontoon deck as a feature, the aim is actually there's very little water in there already but anything that does overflow into that is a feature within the landscape and it becomes a really enriched environment. In the community area towards the south of the site we've got open lawn space and a piazza space which can be used for a number of different community events or pop-up markets for example and the paving there is uh, designed to be fully permeable so that it's attenuating 
heavy rainwater in those storm situations and then it uh, filters it through a series of formal channels into a sunken garden, a community garden, where people can sit and enjoy the planting and the water actually irrigates the trees and the planting to create this rich sensory environment for people and for wildlife. The beauty of this particular project is that it's been monitored over a number of years by Manchester University and they will actually monitor and test how successful these nature-based solutions have been in responding to climate change and the, the added value that this gives is obviously the wildlife benefit and the value to people who can enjoy it as well. Hi, I'm Jamie from Manchester University and I'm here today collecting wellbeing data basically. Uh, and on behalf of uh, the European Commission and the Grow Green project. This time a year ago, there was virtually no one using this park. Uh, I've sat here for hours and a colleague as well, and we count, you know, a handful of people. Today, there's a lot more people and a greater variety. You can see that and we're gonna be quantifying that um, with the data that we've collected today and over the next few weeks. Uh, I'm counting people, uh, they're the, ethnicity, their age, but most importantly, what types of activities, activities they're doing. So connecting with other people, um, maybe it's being physically active. And then the last one is, is mindfulness and take, taking notice. And that's, that's about being aware of your environment. So in this case, a very green environment or being aware of your social environment. So kids playing or people watching, you know, watching others. The, the impact here, the green spaces and, and the evidence around green spaces is, is really quite strong. It's still the early days for the science, but there's some quite clear indications that it has positive impacts in reducing negative things. So reducing things like anxiety, maybe depression and, and stress, uh, but also promoting positive things. So like having more positive emotions like happiness and uh, having a sense of meaning in life. We felt at the onset of the project that it was quite important to actually educate the community on how these nature-based solutions were working. So it didn't become a separate feature of the park, but actually it was integrated into the whole design and the purpose of the park. My grandson said to me, he was stood on the, in, in, over on the other one yesterday, and he came back and said, I thought it wasn't supposed to get puddles in it. I said, I've no idea what you're on about, mate. I said, it's to recycle the water from the rain to stop anything flooding. I said, so, and it can feed all the plants, you know, water all the plants. Oh, oh, okay. So if they come and they ask, I'll tell them. We were thinking of that, what kind of park it will be and what uh, things uh, it will carry to us, what uh, difference it will make in our community, our life, and for me and for <laughs> the children and for the neighborhood in general, yeah. Uh, so we were so excited about that and uh, we became more excited when uh, Amy uh, involved us in um, uh, the stages of the park. As well as combating all the flood risk and the heat stress in the area, it's also such a big impact on the community um, for improving biodiversity and there's all these different types of insects now that kids can come and see that they maybe never even seen before. So it's very exciting for the local community. We've been blown away by what we can do with our children with this being on our doorstep. People are becoming more aware now of the need to look at sustainable issues and climate change is becoming more real in people's lives. It looks like it's not in the middle of Manchester. You don't realise what a big impact it'll make. You, you, you sit and you think, oh no, a park, this will happen, that will happen, yes. and nobody's going to use it, but is it they do. It's worth every penny.